Yeah, welcome all of you to the Center for International Collections at Alden. Uh, this is the center where we manage uh, the international collections in Alden. Uh, we have a subject expert here. Uh, the, uh, we have a Southeast Asia collection and then our African collection is in the normal stacks. And uh, we have um, librarians here, subject librarians. We have Jeff, who is a subject librarian for Southeast Asia and the curator of the Center for International Collections. And then Jeff Shane, he's a <laughs> reference, <laughs> Southeast Asia <laughs> reference librarian. And uh, I'm the African Studies and Social Sciences librarian. And um, this is Jessica. She's a, she's a reference librarian for communications. No, subject librarian for communications and also for uh, the social media coordinator. So she's going to put us on Facebook. So, <laughs> yeah. And um, there is a thank you all for coming. We were supposed to have food, but we made a mistake and didn't oh. order. So sorry about it. I'm really ashamed. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, the, the reason why, uh, the purpose of the exhibit was to highlight um, African authors and also to highlight the library's rich Africana collections. I'm sure most of you don't know that we have an Africana collection in the library. So that's why I, I felt it's important to um, highlight the, some authors. And these authors are what we call the new generation because African writing has been dominated by the first generation who was uh, like uh, writers like Chinua Chidi, who wrote Things Fall Apart. How many of you have read it? Okay, yeah, Things Fall Apart was one of the foremost African uh, book, and it's been translated into so many different languages. And then we have um, Nguji Watinyo, we have um, uh, Wole Soyinka, who even won the Nobel uh, uh, Prize for Literature in uh, 1986. And then we also have um, writers from South Africa like Nadine Godema, J.M. Ketty, who all um, have written about Africa and are mostly about the colonialism. They are, because they were born during colonialism, so their experiences, so most of their writing was on the co uh, colonial experience and how it affected African culture. And uh, then there were the second generation who, like Ayukoyama and them, who wrote about the, after independence, the corruption in African countries. And then we have this new generation, young, most of them are very young writers who mostly, uh, some live in Africa, but many of them live in the United States and Canada. So they also have um, write up on different um, experiences like their immigrant experience, their experience as diaspora, and then also um, they write on migration. So those are all different perspectives. So that's why I figured that these are, and the, all the uh, books highlighted uh, were published since 2000. So some of the authors that you will see in this uh, Chinua Chip, uh, no, sorry. Um, Adichie, <laughs> Chimamanda Adichie, she's now described as one of the foremost, or the one, of, one of the most important voices in African literature today. And then I also, we also have Chris Abani, who is a, a professor at uh, Northwestern University. He's very versatile. He's a, a novelist, a poet, um, a, what else, a, essays, a screenwriter, and a playwright. <coughs> And then we also have um, Teju Cole, who is described as one of the most gifted writers today. And then we have uh, writers like um, Yaa JC, whose book just came out last year. And then um, No Violet Bulawayo, also her book came out recently. And they are described as the stars of African writing. And then we have um, rising stars like uh, Minjestu over there, and then uh, the names are, <laughs> you might not be familiar with the names, but, and then we have Tende Huchu. So there are so many different authors, so well, again, welcome, and I will, I will call Keith to uh, give some remarks, and then read from, um, no, we need new names by 
uh, by no Violet Bulawayo, and then Rosa will read from Homegoing by YGC, and then afterwards you can ask any questions you want. Thank you very much, um, Antia Raba, subject uh, librarian, uh, for, 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 for. So you will note that I use Anti Araba because that's the way we show. You know, I can't just call her by my by her first name. So that tells uh, you something about our you know relationships uh, with our elders in the African community. So when we started this class. I assigned a reading from Ngugi Wathiong, right? I guess most of you remember that. And um, the main theme of that reading was uh, on <coughs> the theme of the language of African uh, literature. And as it has already been said, um, this literature you know, has undergone through different historical moments. At some point, the focus was on the themes of colonization by those early uh, writers, uh, something that we have also defined uh, in class. But now the focus of this exhibition is uh, African writers, especially those who are the leading uh, novelists, who are writing themes that are relevant in today's discussions or today's uh, uh, development. So before I read uh, uh, from No Violet Bulawayo, that's just a short excerpt. I want you to think of the following as you uh, pay attention to the exhibitions. Um, by just looking at some of these titles, what are the themes and styles that you think these uh, writers are trying to engage uh, with? And that will come out very clearly in a short uh, response or reflection that I want you guys to submit uh, for this class. Um, what are their various uh, diverse cultural backgrounds? Most of them, like if you take a look at them, they are from different places in across Africa. You know, what does this say? You know, what influences uh, different kinds of themes that uh, they get to uh, write about? Also think about what, why is it important for us to be having such an exhibition in an American uh, university, you know? So think around uh, those lines, why it's important for you as an American to read non-American uh, literatures. What is it that you can uh, learn uh, from that? With this uh, few uh, words, I would just like to read from uh, we need new names by No Violet uh, Bulawayo. When you go to uh, many places in the African continent, uh, for example, in Botswana, I live in a place called Broadhurst, and uh, there is the second city of Botswana is called Francistown, named after David <laughs> Francistown. If you go to uh, a place like uh, Namibia, there is Venhook. Sierra Leone, the capital city, is free town. <laughs> so indeed, we need new names, don't we? <laughs> because now these names do not reflect on our culture. Be uh, those places existed before uh, there were colonial settlers. This uh, is the argument that you know we are being uh, told on. So now Violet says. If you are stealing something, it's better if it is small and hideable or something you can eat quickly and be done with, like guavas. <laughs> that way people can see you with the thing to be reminded that you are a shameless thief and that you stole it from them. So I don't know what the white people are trying to do in the first place, stealing not just a tiny piece, but a whole country. <laughs> Who can ever forget you stole something like that? Nobody knows why my grandfather's body is. So now the church people say his spirit is inside me and won't live until his body is buried right. 
The thing is, I've never really seen or felt the spirit myself to say if it is true or people are just lying, which is what adults will do sometimes because they are adults. So we find no violence. Writing about Zimbabwe and her narrative helps us understand why a country like Zimbabwe is now in a position, in a condition, social uh, economic condition that uh, it finds itself in uh, recently. So indeed these uh, writers were there to give us uh, a lot to think about. There is an audio version here with the, uh, the, the, the also the videos uh, where they do uh, an exchange of interviews and many other things that you can feel free to listen to as you explore the exhibition. I'd like to call uh, Rosa and then move to a close this later. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming for today's event. So I'm going to read, um, I'm going to read like a very short excerpt from um, Yajasi's Homegoing. Um, this is a picture. This book I read, when did I read this book? I think I read it. <laughs> This summer, no way we're in the we we're, we're in the yeah. So I read it last summer, 2017, and this book. There's been a lot of noise about it, and like most things that there's generally so much noise about, you wonder exactly what is in there, right? So this is just one of those books that I read that I wasn't disappointed after having heard so much. I'm African. I'm from Ghana. This book just made me realize how much I do not know about my own heritage. Mm -hmm. This book is historical fiction. It's about the slave trade. And um, I don't know what you're all studying, but I don't know if you can relate to reading material that is very dry and abstract. And you're like, okay, so what? So this book um, is fiction that brings you into events as they happen. And it's like, it's more or less like a movie. You just have to imagine it. And that's what fiction does. It gives you the extra dramatic information. It gives you the extra, it kind of like fleshes out the skeleton that you need in theory or abstract um, material. So before I read um, the essay, I just want you to think about um, these themes that I, I outlined from, from the little excerpt. So the thing about, I don't want to generalize and say African society. But for example, in Ghana, a huge emphasis is placed on childbirth and family. So um, I have a quote from Tay Selassie, and she's also somewhere there. And Tay Selassie says that, in the peculiar hierarchy of African households, the only rank lower than motherless child is childless mother. So it's, I don't know if it's a paradox, but so the only rank that is lower, like, the, the lowest of society is either a motherless child or a childless mother. So think about that. That quote just makes you understand how much we place emphasis on family and childbirth. Um, and also, this essay also highlights the difficulty surrounding mental health conversations in some African societies. Now, the character is crazy. Everyone says she's crazy. She doesn't think she's crazy, but she just gets mocked at. And so it just makes you understand how issues like mental health is treated in different countries. And then we have, of course, the conversation of colonialism and the slave trade. And the last thing that I also saw in this little essay is um, conversations surrounding feminism and how, um, in, in general, African women are sort of seen as suppressed. But in this book, you see a lot of female characters who show you that African women are not suppressed like the world likes to tell us. So the essay is, um, Ekua was wary of the villages. The only people who brought her any joy were her children. Amasewa was speaking real words now, leaving behind the fast and frantic no nonsense speech of the early twos. Now, no one questioned Ekua when she wanted to take long walks with her children. They didn't question her when she thought a stick was a snake or when she left the food in the fire to burn. When they whispered crazy woman, they had to do it behind Nana Sewe's back because if the woman heard them, 
she would give them a tongue lashing that would sting almost as much as the real thing. Ekua would start each walk by asking her daughters where they wanted to go. She would sling baby Yao in a wrapper around her back and wait for the girls to direct her. Often, they would say the same things. They would walk, they would walk by Yas and Tos Palace. The place had been preserved in her honor, and the girls liked to stand outside the gate singing the post-war songs. So, there we have it. A local excerpt highlighting the importance of childbirth and family and some information about the women. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rosa. Before we call Dennis, do you guys have any comments, any questions so far? I see Paul has a lot of questions, and Brendan, <laughs> and Clue, <Kyo>, Riley, <laughs> say something. Any questions? Anyone wants to engage? So what, do you, what have you learned from the exhibit? Do you have you picked up any? Yes, please. Um, I just like think it's cool how important family is and children and African society and everything like that. What else? And to add to that, I just, as a Ghanaian, I was really surprised by how, um, I was surprised, I don't know how, how this will sound, but I was surprised at um, the nursing home, like how some people choose to put their parents in nursing homes. So where I come from, old people stay at home and get really old and just stay at home with everybody. So being Ghanaian, studying in the US, it was very interesting to see that some old people are put in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Well, on that note, let's uh, invite another literary giant, <laughs> Dennis Moot. <laughs> well, I think um, much has been said. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Ontario and the, um, the staff and librarians um, of the International um, Collection for putting up this. And this is very timely. In an era where you hear about Africa referred to as a country and all the tongue lashing that is being said about Africans, this is a very nice opportunity to open up our uh, perspective into the dynamics that flow within the African continent. Um, for us also, in, in learning about other cultures and learning about people, especially those that are here, those that we hear about, um, this is a very, a very um, nice exhibition that would at least introduce us to some of the literatures and some of the things that um, go around in the African uh, continent. And most importantly, it is changing the story, the way story is being told. It is changing it from the hunter to the prey, where the prey tells, gets the opportunity to, to talk about their own experience, to talk about their own um, life and what is most important to them. So I would like to once again thank Cheraba and then thank uh, my fellow colleagues for putting this together. That is wonderful. So spread the word, let people come and experience um, the, the African writers that we have visited here and some of the stories that we uh, talk about. And I'd like to challenge each one, each one of you, uh, if you haven't read anything from Africa, pick something and then mm -hmm. read it. And you'll be open up to a whole perspective that um, you are used to. So thank you for coming and um, invite your prayers uh, watch the video. <laughs> yeah. Interact with us. Thank you. Yeah, and ask any questions. Yeah. Chance, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys can feel free to take the final. You know. Yeah. Uh,